we had some very very eclectic intros the last few weeks. I love I absolutely love my album. It's so stupid and funny. So <laughs> what is that? Brian Dable's play call sheet? <laughs> yeah, it's all scribble <laughs> on line paper. <laughs> Like, subscribe, repeat. All right, Bills fans. Got a pretty, uh, pretty busy month coming up. Well, it's not only a busy month, but let's take a look at the offseason schedule as a whole because when you start walking into what to expect, like these couple weeks can normally be pretty lame. Yeah. Right? Because teams aren't going to be signing guys. They're not really going to be releasing guys because they have paperwork to submit to the NFL. Well, I don't know that. Yeah, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that happens right now that kind of makes it a little slower than usual. Um, so, let's talk about off-season schedule. Um, we're going to talk about the most important and pressing thing. So, as this is recorded, it is uh, Saturday, February 16th. So, when you guys see it, it'll be the 17th. Um, effective February 19th is the first day that teams can fra uh, franchise tag or transition tag players. Boom. Now, that's important for somebody like Le'Veon Bell, who that Steelers could transition tag him. Which is all, all signs point to him being right. a transition tag and some team offered him. Right. But not, I think it was the Antonio Brown thing, but I don't think they're going to let him go within a division. No, I agree. Or to the Patriots. I agree. Well, again, with the transition tag, they lose the ability to determine where he's going to go because he goes and fields an offer. So any team within the division could just say, screw you. We're going <laughs> to... Paying fifty million dollars the first season, you, you're not going to match that. So it's very interesting. You can check the description below. There's a whole video on franchise tags that we did from forever ago, but I'm sure it's fine. We did. We did a whole episode on explaining how franchise tags work. Okay. Mario is normally better at this than me with remembering what we've done. So this scares me a little bit that I just told you there's something in the description. Instead that of going in the description, just check it out right up here. We'll slide in. Oh. You're welcome. Okay. We'll just do that then. Okay, um, so that is day one. Um, next important date is the scouting combine, right? The scouting combine happens February 28th through March 4th. Now, that is longer than TV coverage. There's interviews and, you know, weigh-in days. So you're going to have to keep an eye on Twitter if you want to follow what's happening at the combine uh, for the Wonder first like two days. Not important. Anyway, so as I said, some stuff's important, some stuff's not. Um, which reminds me, do you think Kyler Murray is going to opt out of the height portion of the scouting combine? You can opt out of anything. If you don't want your hands measured, you don't want to get them measured. Do you, do you think he's going to opt out of the, like, the height? I love how... <clears throat> someone said something. Lincoln Riley said height, not an issue for Murray. I said, of course, he's been that height his whole life. It's never an issue for him. <laughs> Uh, TV coverage is typically on NFL Networks, so that's going to start February 28th. So again, it's got a combine starts two days earlier than TV coverage, so uh, it's not very interesting stuff. It's just like weigh-ins, and again, I don't know why like, it doesn't matter. Way in. It's not that important. It's weird. This guy um, takes off work to watch it. I don't think I should be judged for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Next important date is March 5th. So this is interesting. So immediately after the last date of the scouting combine, is the deadline to franchise tag a player. Love it. Isn't that peculiar? It's a deadline to transition to franchise tag a it player. So after you get a look at all the scouting combine guys, if you're delaying, you can now still put a franchise or transition tag on a guy the day after the scouting combine ends. So that I think is very peculiar. Um, it, it's just one of those things, you know, that's that's kind of funky about the NFL calendar. Also with the scouting combine, GMs get a chance to talk to other GMs. So. Lots of activity happens at the scouting combine. Ever since the season ended, until the draft is over, it's a game of no limit hold'em. Mm -hmm. All right, so any kind of GM quote, soundbite, coaches quote, soundbite, anything like that, it's just it's all posture, smoke screen. Yeah. Just never None take of any of that. Like, oh yeah, we're we're definitely looking at uh, you know the uh, keeping the Sean McCoy thing is the one that gets me most. You know, like I know you're gonna say you're gonna keep LeSean McCoy. I know that. 
I know you're going to say it because you got uh, your number two running back is also going to, you know, it's also 31 and your third running back is 27. Like, I, you're going to say that. You don't have any other options. But of course you're going to say that. It's like my son saying he's going to keep a toy before I walk in through the door with another Minecraft thing. He's like, oh, I want that one. Yeah, right, exactly. You know I mean? So, I, no, okay. No. It's the shiny thing. It's the shiny thing. <laughs> Ooh, a piece of candy. Yeah, but any any quote from a front office guy, from us to you, just... Just don't even... I don't even, don't even pay attention to it. Right, None of it matters. Pay attention to the... Follow the numbers. Yeah. That'll tell you where they're going. Well, and that's a, that's a great point to bring up. So, we t just talked about Charles Clay... Uh, Charles Clay got cut, right? So the question becomes, why cut him now? Why not cut him when the league year starts? Because that's the next domino to fall here. Yes. League year starts March 13th. Now, there is a legal tampering period where teams can discuss with players' agents that are going to be free legal. agents. Yeah, legal tampering. They have to label it legal tampering yeah. period because Well, they're otherwise... still under contract, technically. Players, yeah. mm. players' contracts run until 4 p.m. on March 13th. So yep. any player that is that is a free agent is actually still under contract until March 13th. Yep. So no team can talk to any free agent right now. Um, it's a month from now that they can actually talk to them. Except there's a small window, March 13th, March 11th through the 13th. Teams can talk to players who are going to be free agents um, at four o'clock on March 13th. You want to talk about Verizon and Sprint blowing up? The I don't, right? Oh my God. But I think the important thing to remember there is that, like the Bills here, cut Charles Clay. So Charles Clay can sign with any team right now. They yes. cut him. They cut him before the start of the league year, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that say when you cut a player before the start of the league year? What does that mean? What do you think that means in the case of Charles Clay? In case, of, I, I was just saying in general, what it means is that, like with Tyrod Taylor, you know how like if their contract reaches the third day of the new mm -hmm. league year, right. they have to pay him a certain bonus. Yep. Well, they don't have to pay Clay that bonus. He didn't have a prorated bonus though. Right. Anyway. But what does but that say? That says that he could sign with any other team, which means that no other team wanted to trade for him. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I think that's where that kind of goes. A lot of teams were like, $4.5 million for Charles Clay, and we have to give you something? We could sign him for four point five after you cut him. So, yeah, yeah. That's and, fine and the thing us. about it is, it it throws a wrench into some teams. Where if, if, he, if you weren't able to trade him to anybody, it's two weeks. You have, a two, you have two weeks before the start of the new league year, which Paul says on March 13th, so like February 27th, 28th. Uh -huh. Um, is when you have to submit your paperwork to roll over your cap money. Yeah, that's not automatic. A lot of people think no. that cap just rolls from year to no, year. No, you got to no, submit paperwork to do that. And understand that there's some franchises, like the Cleveland Browns, who don't get paperwork in on time. <laughs> so for some franchises, this is a bigger deal than others. But that's totally true. Roller cap doesn't just happen. You have to submit to the league to get it approved to have yes. it added to next year's cap. Um, so now you're putting teams under the gun right. with 13 days left to try to sign him after you cut him. So right. That's, the thing. that's exactly what it is. So what you do is you cut him early. It looks like, oh, the bills are nice. They're going to cut this guy. He's got a month to find a team to sign with before the before the draft. <laughs> no, it's not very it's not Is it nice. two days after his birthday? Did oh, they yeah. cut him? They did. They, it, was his birthday, <laughs> it was his birthday yesterday. It was his birthday two days ago. <laughs> they cut him the day after his birthday, I That's think. so... That we'll good? give him a day win. We'll um, celebrate Valentine's Day as a bill. I hope they didn't send him any merch. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens. Um, so, yes, he is free to sign. Charles Clay specifically, anybody cut is free to sign with any team. However, one of the reasons you do that is because, um, again, you're clearing out all the paperwork mm -hmm. to, for your rollover cap. That's, that's really what you're doing. Um... So, uh, effective March 13th, 4 p.m., uh, free agency officially starts. But again, with this legal tampering period, you'll hear a lot of leaks on contracts being signed days oh, yeah, before yeah. that. That's what happens. So, uh, the, the contracts officially can't be signed till 4 o'clock. Uh, and it's on almost March like 13th. 4 to 5 on that day is just chaos. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Can you believe this? Can you believe this guy went? You went this guy went here? This guy went here? Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um, uh, March 24th through the 27th is the annual league meeting. The reason I included that was because the league will now have an opportunity to look at the success of the AAF. Yes. Because it's, the AAF is very successful after week one. The, the experience at home from watching it is a billion times better than watching an NFL game. So that league quicker. meeting, it's way quicker. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the the commercials are are brought into the game experience right there's no tv timeouts there's a lot of cool things about it so i think that first lead meeting is going to be pretty important because they're going to start examining some of the success the short-term successes of the aaf and see okay what what really can we do here to adapt so i think that that date's pretty important um after that april 1st is when any new coach can start training camp. New coaches get it two weeks earlier to start training camp. Ooh. So not a problem here, but it, it, you'll see some teams around the NFL hit training camp and the Bills will still be two weeks out. It's just the way it is. Yeah, um, yeah that's just the way that is. New coaches get uh, get that extended uh, time frame. It's funny how it's April 1st. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, April 19th is the deadline for restricted free agents. So the Bills have a few restricted free agents on their team. Like um, a lot and, of things in that month already go down. Yeah. Before the restricted free, that's why it puts a lot of heat on the restricted free agents to sign themselves. Right. So we'll give an example. Isaiah McKenzie is going to be a restricted free agent. So what does that mean? That means that the team's going to offer him a contract, and he has to accept it or deny it, or um, a team could sign him to that deal. And they would have to trade the bills, whatever tender the bills put on Isaiah McKenzie. So let's say they value Isaiah McKenzie at a third round pick. They offer him a third round pick salary, right? That's what it is. They offer him a third round pick salary. Any team could sign him, but they'd have to give the bills a third round pick. Now you can't just tender every restricted free agent. No, like you have to no. choose who, who it's going to be. But. A couple of years ago, when you, if you guys remember, they, t- they tendered Groy at a second. They yeah. tendered Gillisley at a fifth. Right. And, and then we then the the Bills lost Gillis. Yeah, they lost Gillis, and everyone was up in arms about it. Right? Oh my God, how do we? Why do we do that? Well, well, Groy was a guy that played center guard. You know, rotated on that line. The, the, the type of importance they yeah. put on Groy, yeah. which is what they're. I mean, we can go into this later, but they, what Spencer Long pretty much is going to replace Groy. Yeah, right? yeah, I think I think that's, that's the contract that he's. But in. the fifth round pick, I don't know about this. Maybe you guys can help me. Is the fifth round pick they got from New England? Who they who they use to get Teller? Oh, that yeah, could be. I'm wondering. It could be. Thanks it for giving be. us another live in there, New England. Yeah, I know, right? I'll give us Trent Brown. We'll call it even. <laughs> July 15th. So we go from April to July because that's all training camp stuff. July 15th uh, is the deadline for the franchise player to sign his ext- sign an extension, right? And then August 31st is cut down date from 90 to 53. Interesting wrinkle about the salary cap this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this. Talk to me. They're going away from the top 51 players and they're going to top 53 now. So the top 50, so all 53 players will now count against the salary cap. And that is effective <laughs> September 5th. That okay. they go to, so every player on the team counts towards the salary cap. That wasn't how it always was. It used to be top 51 contracts. Now yeah, it's it was 53. tough. It was. But, yeah. I mean, honestly, what, you, what you're adding, a million dollars. Not That's even, because most of those guys are making 300, 400,000. So they're making nothing. Funny so. story. Under the, current, uh, under the current format, if it's top 51, you know who doesn't count against the cap? Who? Duke Williams. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He He's wouldn't. the 53rd highest player yeah, on the that's team. That's right. That's right. He wouldn't count. Um, unfortunately, that dream's only going to last until September. <laughs> oh, future number one wide receiver, Duke Williams, last. We're not jumping. Like, I understand. We're, I understand. It's just it's funny just, to think funny. about as far as from a number standpoint. Everybody. And um, can we just put a little, a little disclaimer for everyone? Yeah, because I see this happen all the time. You see it happen all the time, and it's the only time where I really roll my eyes a lot. Everyone that gets cut from another team, please don't suggest that they go to the Bills. Uh, Everywhere, it is true. Yeah, everywhere. It is true. Hey, do you think we should get this guy? Do you think we should get this guy? Is he, and uh, it's just, oh, just temper your expectations a little bit. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's some good players that get cut because of salary cap implications, you know? Oh, it my happens. God, Flacco went to the Broncos. We could have had him. Well, Flacco, like, what? Flacco's going to the Broncos. Trade hasn't happened yet because it's not allowed to happen until mm-hmm. March 13th. Mm-hmm. But the Broncos had to clear salary cap space because they're going to have to sign him, so they released Brandon Marshall. Inside linebacker Brandon Marshall. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, you're going to want to stay tuned for that. 